OK, so uh, here we have two examples. Uh, in the first example, our output y of t is equal to sine x of t. OK? So is this time invariant or time varying? Right, so to show that it is time invariant, uh, time invariant or time varying, you need to show that if you are given the same input call seconds later, right, you have to see if the output would remain the same just with the same call time shift. Okay? So suppose we first look at an input x1 of t and its output y sub 1 of t is sine of x sub 1 of t. Okay? Now to show that it is time invariant, we need to show that if we insert a signal x sub 2 of t that is equal to x sub 1 of t minus some time shift t naught, we hope that the output y sub 2 of t will be equal to y sub 1 of t shifted by the same time t naught. Okay? So we need to verify if this is true or not. Okay? So we just plug in x2 of t inside here. So this is equal to sine x sub 2 of t, which is equal to sine x sub 1 of t minus t naught. Okay. And sine of sine of x sub 1 of t minus t naught, right, is just y, of, y sub 1 of t minus t naught. So this is just y sub 1 of t minus t naught. Okay. So yes, indeed, the output of x2 is just a time shift of the input by the same time t naught. Okay. So hence, the system is time invariant. Now, in the second example, uh, we have output y of n that is equal to n times the input x of n. Okay? Now, is this system time invariant or time varying? Okay. So, again, how many of you think this is time invariant? All right, raise your hand. So how many of you think it's time varying? OK. So can you explain why you think it's time varying? Yeah, you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so because of this factor n, right, you would expect that the system is time varying because if you insert the signal at a certain time shift, right, at a certain time shift later, right, even though the shape of the signal still remains the same, it is amplified by a different factor. Okay? Yeah, so intuitively, this is, this is time varying. So to, 
Right, to, to show that the system is not time invariant, we just have to find a counterexample. Okay. So the counterexample we're going to use here is to choose x1n as a unit impulse. Okay. So, right, this unit impulse has a one at time zero and zero everywhere else. Okay. So if you insert this into the system, right, this x of n is non-zero only when n is equal to zero. But when n is equal to zero, you're multiplying by zero, so the output is still zero. Okay. So the output y sub 1n is 0 for all n. Okay. Now, to show if it is time invariant, right, it's, we look at what is the response to a time-shifted version of x1. So let x2 be a time-shifted version of x1. Suppose we shift it by 1, OK? And so this is just delta of n minus 1. OK. So here we're looking at a signal x2 that is a time-shifted version of x1 by one time unit, OK? Now, suppose we substitute this inside, OK? So we have y2n equal to nx2n, which is equal to n times delta of n minus 1. OK? So here, y2 is the output corresponding to the input x2. Right? So I just substitute x2 inside here, and x2n is delta of n minus 1. OK? Right. Now, you can see that this function, y2n, is not always 0, right? It is not always 0 because uh, suppose you look at the time index 1, right? When n is equal to 1, this is 1 times delta of 0, which is also 1, right? So y sub 2 of n at time 1 has a non-zero value. So it is obviously not a time-shifted version of y1. So it's not equal to y1 n minus 1, which is 0. OK? So to show that a system is time invariant, you need to prove that you know, this property holds for any input signal. But to show that it is not time invariant, you just need to find a counterexample. Okay. All right. So here, since you know y two n is not a time shifted version of y1n, okay? hence the system is not time invariant. OK? Or sometimes we just say that you know, it is time varying.
Okay. So let's look at one more example. Okay. This example is a little bit tricky.